Excuse me, uh, may I ask a question? Uh, what's your impression about Japan? I mentioned from the mass, especially they are very punctual. And especially the buses and trains are exactly at the same time, the same place, and the right place on, on time. Okay, Japan is a highly developed country economically, and the people are very friendly, and also you can see they are very hardworking. Everything is very expensive, but you can find everything if you need. In Japan, they comment on many things. Yes, but what they are saying are favorable impressions of Japan and the Japanese. Currently, the life expectancy of Japan is the longest in the world. A recent issue of the British scientific magazine Nature reported that the life expectancy of the Japanese would be more than 90 in 2050. It's amazing. When I was a child, which is only a little more than a half a century ago, it was usually said in our life of 50 years. 50 years of life? The Japanese came through World War II and the hardships because of it, right? We suffered from an extreme shortage of food right after the war. I remember my childhood when we lived barely on the subsistent level. I heard that many died of tuberculosis. Yes, the peak of tuberculosis infection was right before and after the end of the war. I recall it as if it was yesterday. It means Japan has changed rapidly. We owe it to our senior generations who have continued to struggle against diseases in defiance of poverty. It is not possible to achieve the economic progress or good health standard of a nation in a short time. Now we will review how the Japan of today has been built, focusing on the health and medical systems. The history of the health and medical systems in Japan can be largely divided into five phases, from phase one to phase five. These periods cover the Meiji Restoration, World Wars, and rapid economic growth period after World War II to today. The health and medical systems have changed reflecting the political and economic conditions of the times and the relations with other countries. Now we will see in more in detail. In 1868, the Meiji government was established after more than 200 years of national seclusion. In order to promote its modernization process, the government followed the examples of Western nations and pushed forward system reforms in the industrial, social, administrative, and educational sectors. In the field of health and medical systems, the government established the Medical Affairs Section in the Ministry of Education in 1872. The Health Administration was developed centering on Western medicine in place of mainly traditional Chinese medicine. In 1874, the medical system was promulgated instituting relevant systems such as the institution of the medical practitioner systems, midwife licensing system, medical education, and pharmaceutical affairs. Later, the midwifery regulations, the medical practitioner's law, dental practitioner's law, nursing regulations, and other laws and regulations were instituted, and systems for qualification of medical personnel were developed. It was not only positive things that resulted from the opening of the country. Acute infectious diseases such as cholera, dysentery, typhoid fever, and others were brought into Japan. These infectious diseases spread across the country as human interaction and merchandise distribution increased along with the progress of industries. As a result, many people were deprived of their lives. 
Facing the critical situation, the government transferred the responsibility of the Health Administration to the Ministry of Home Affairs in 1875. The Ministry and the Police Authority together established a system to prevent epidemics. Around the same time, the statistics system began to be developed to obtain basic health statistics for policies. In 1876, the government began to take mortality statistics and vital statistics in 1899. Government set up the Health and Sanitation Research Council in the Ministry of Home Affairs in 1916 and conducted a nationwide survey on the morbidity of tuberculosis and various chronic diseases and on infant mortality. It was found that Japan's health standards were lower than other industrialized countries. As scientific analyses were made available based on accurate statistics obtained through nationwide surveys, more relevant policies came to be formulated. During period phase one, the government was hastily moving forward to build Japan a modern nation state and it pushed forward measures to control acute infectious diseases and to organize systems as listed here. The foundation of the health and medical system was built during this period. The government made clever use of human resources such as midwives and Chinese medicine practitioners existing since the Edo era. During phase two, we were affected by World War II. Healthy soldiers and healthy people was the national wartime motto. We cannot discuss people's health during that age without referring to the military. Japan rushed into war. What annoyed the government and the military in the field of health was the prevalence of tuberculosis that deprived many adult men of their lives. The government was also concerned about high infant mortality. As those who contracted tuberculosis in military camps, factories and schools returned to their hometowns, the disease spread across the country. There was no good therapy to treat tuberculosis at that time. The government tried to control the epidemic by revising the Tuberculosis Prevention Act enacted in 1919, but it did not help solve the problem. There was no other way for patients to recover than resting quietly in a place with clean air. In rural villages, particularly in the northern part of Japan, people were living a subsistent life. In addition, the economic depression in 1929 and cold weather damage drove people into extreme poverty. There were many local communities without any doctors, or even if there was one, many people could not afford medical services. Farmer unions and local governments employed public health nurses at their own expense and sent them to no doctor villages. Public health nurses lived in a community and continued to provide devoted services for the benefit of community people. Celebrating the birth of the Crown Prince, the Imperial Gift Foundation, Aiku Association, was established in 1934. Aiku Association provided expectant mothers with health guidance and delivery care. It also provided children at nursery schools with lunch. In this way, Aiku Association gave great help to improve maternal and child health standards and develop the sense of solidarity among community people. Around this time, the government created many organizations and systems that serve as the basis of the health and medical system of today. In 1937, it promulgated the Public Health Center Act and began to develop the public health centers as community health stations. In 1938, the Ministry of Health and Welfare was established. With this, an administrative structure was set up to control health and welfare from the national to village level. In the same year, the National Public Health Institute was established with financial support by the Rockefeller Foundation in the United States. As an educational institution, the institute has trained many public health experts. The 
The National Health Insurance Law was enacted in 1938. Five years later, 95% of all municipalities in Japan introduced the health insurance system. Further, public health nurses were instituted by the Public Health Nurse Regulations in 1941. They were part of a public health center or a local government and carried out home visit activities as important agents in the prevention of tuberculosis infection and enhanced maternal and child health services. In 1942, the Pregnant Mother's Handbook system was introduced. By instituting the pregnancy reporting system, the government promoted the registration of pregnant women so that comprehensive maternal and child health services could be provided. Thanks to this system and the devoted work by public health nurses, infant mortality rate lowered remarkably. I have a maternal and child health handbook. The handbook has been revised a number of times. But it amazes me that the handbook was created as early as 1942 to manage the health of mothers and children. Children are precious to parents and they also are treasures for the country. During phase two, the centralized health and medical administration system was established as shown by the creation of the Ministry of Health and Welfare. Under the ministry, community health approaches unique to Japan began to be taken by local initiatives. You're right. The handbook is a good example. Efforts to prevent tuberculosis infection and lower infant mortality led to the institution of public health nurses from women in the community and promoted community participation in health activities. We should not forget about the National Health Insurance Act. It should be noted that Japan aimed for the universal health insurance system when the economy of the nation was not strong enough. In order to distinguish this period from the later one, this period is called the first universal health insurance period. But it is regrettable that the system was destroyed during the war. Certainly. Now we will proceed to the next period, that is phase three post-war days. On August 15, 1945, World War II ended with the defeat of Japan. Japan was placed under the control of the general headquarters of the Allied forces. Under GHQ's support and guidance, Japan began to walk the path toward becoming a democratic nation state. The Constitution of Japan was promulgated in 1946. Under this Constitution, the state was mandated to guarantee its people's right to live and to improve the standard of living of the nation. The health and administration was transformed greatly. Under the GHQ direction, the Ministry of Health and Welfare was reorganized. In 1948, the new laws, namely Medical Service Law, Medical Practitioner's Law, Dental Practitioner's Law, and Public Health Nurses, Midwives, and Nurses Law were enacted, and systems relevant to medical facilities and personnel were reformed. Further, in 1947, the pre-war Public Health Center Law was revised. The Public Health Center was placed in the center of the Public Health and Medical Service Network and services were widely extended to community people. The public health center in post-war Japan has two pillars of services. One is public health services for people, such as infectious disease prevention and health guidance. Services include tuberculosis diagnosis, maternal and child health checkups, and vaccinations. The other one, public hygiene services include environmental hygiene and food hygiene. Water supply and sewage, living environment, and cleaning of public spaces are among its services. Around this time, medicines to treat tuberculosis were developed. 
Together with the efforts made by the public health centers, this long-feared lethal disease came to be controlled. Finally, in 1951, tuberculosis gave away its position of number one cause of deaths to cerebral apoplexy. After this year, deaths of tuberculosis declined rapidly. We interviewed Dr. Shimao, who has devoted his career to the struggle against tuberculosis since the end of the war. He is now an advisor to the Japan Anti-Tuberculosis Association. それから医療費も、そういう統計が取れるようになったのは戦後のことなんですけれども、昭和29年の統計だと、総医療費の28%結核に使われていると。だからそれぐらい大きな病気だったんで、いわゆる国民病と言いますか、もう結核は日本を滅ぼす亡国病だと再言われていたと。で、それを防ぐためにはどうしたらいいと。まず感染症だから移らないようにすればいいと。それから3
Thanks to the many measures put forward by the government and efforts by public health nurses and midwives to improve nutrition conditions and environmental hygiene, infant mortality rate declined rapidly. There were also people's initiatives to protect their health themselves. One example was the movement called No Mosquitoes and Flies program that was carried out on the nationwide level. Under village leaders, neighborhood associations were engaged in parasite control and cleaning rivers and helped improve environmental hygiene. In the field of health and medical services, many laws were enacted or revised just in two years after World War II. It was a period of reconstruction in the health and medical administration. These were part of efforts to turn Japan into a democratic state. GHQ poured energy into reforming the public health centers and established model public health centers all over the country. In this period, people were involved positively in activities to improve their living conditions, and researchers strongly supported their activities. Yes, to control parasites, mosquitoes, and flies, researchers gave them scientific and economic advice to control sources of breeding. In the case of tuberculosis control, they developed a vaccine and determinated examination methods. Right. However, the strongest engine for the anti-TB drive was the tuberculosis prevention law in 1951. You're right. Under the law, TB patients were able to receive medical care with only a nominal fee. The government conducted regular checkups, took full measures to prevent the spread of tuberculosis, and provided patients with treatment by registering them and giving guidance. The government was determined to eradicate TB, so it allocated as much as a quarter of the total medical expenses to anti-TB measures. This point may be a good example for developing countries struggling to control HIV, AIDS epidemic. That's right. Another feature in this period is the rise in community-based health promotion activities in partnership with school teachers and better living conditions. By the way, when you were born, did a midwife attend your delivery? Yes. Births of my generation were all taken care of by midwives. I am rather familiar with the traditional term for midwife, samba. I was born in a hospital. I can hardly imagine how delivery can take place in a home. Is that so? Then let us listen to Ms. Fukuoka, a midwife. Her mother was also a midwife. She will give us information about delivery at home almost half a century ago. やっぱりあの、お湯だけはね、行くまでにちゃんと近所中の人がね、みんなお湯は沸かしといてくれた。今の時代と言いましたけどね。だからあの、どんなものもね、うちうちには随分あの、全部ネット社とかしてね、ボロですよ。うん。あの頃に下町でのお散歩さんたちはよくやりましたね。お散歩さんでね、金持ちになったの一人もいません
It certainly was. Now the next period is when the economy flourished all at once. Yes, but there were some backlashes though. In phase four, Japan accelerated its economic growth. People came to enjoy an affluent life, and their diets changed. Health focuses shifted from tuberculosis and other infectious diseases and maternal and child health services to cancer and heart diseases that are commonly termed lifestyle-related diseases. Instead of health services, needs for medical services rose. The greatest event in the Health and Medical Administration in the 1960s was the achievement of the Universal Medical Care Insurance System in 1961. It is not too much to say that this universal medical care coverage has helped push Japan's rise to be the nation with the world's longest life expectancy. Under the medical care insurance system, all people became able to consult with doctors easily without worrying over payments. In order to meet people's needs for medical services, the government has developed policies to increase medical facilities and personnel and upgrade service quality. All the prefectural governments joined together to establish Jichi Medical School in 1972 to provide better medical services in local districts where there were not enough medical doctors. This medical school trained medical personnel who would work in remote districts. However, behind this remarkable economic growth, environmental pollution became a serious social problem throughout the country. The pursuit of economic affluence through the development of heavy industries created hazards to people's health. With a sense of crisis, people launched movements to solve pollution problems. In response, the government enacted the Basic Law for Environmental Pollution and relevant laws to control air, water, noise, and other pollutants. We became richer economically during this period, but we had painful counterblows of environmental pollution. That's right. We must always consider that everything has both positive and negative aspects. An increase in the number of automobiles resulted in the rise of traffic accidents. People had been compelled to bear the burden silently, but they turned to urge the government to take measures against environmental pollution and drug-induced diseases such as SMAN and thalamide-deformed babies. The achievement of the universal medical care coverage was also a great move. As a result, the Japanese now enjoy the world's top-ranking longevity. There are two sides to this same coin, so I have a little worry about its future development. Shall we then proceed to the final period, phase five? In the 1990s, the bubble economy collapsed and the Japanese economy suddenly entered the age of economic recession and deflation. Improved living environments, advanced medicine, and advancement in medical care helped prolong people's lifespan in general. But as low fertility has continued for years, the age structure of the population has been undergoing a great change. Population aging is going on with a speed that human history has never seen. Because of highly technological medical care and longer treatment periods, medical expenditure has swelled to pressurize the national finance. Particularly, medical expenses for the elderly have now come to occupy one-third of the total medical expenditure. As one measure to address this situation, the Diet passed the bill to establish the long-term care insurance system in 1997. The law provides that the local government should take responsibility to give comprehensive nursing care to the elderly. This marked a new system to support the elderly with insurance contributions paid by local people with governmental contribution. 
As people's needs have diversified and the administrative decentralization process had progressed, changes occurred in the field of health and medical services. It was a move to mandate the municipal governments taking the place of the public health centers in providing maternal and child health services and health counseling services. The law to facilitate this move was the Community Health Law that was put into practice on a full scale in 1997. Further in 2002, the Health Promotion Law was enacted that encourages people to be health conscious and control their health with their own initiatives to prevent diseases. Currently, the government and concerned parties are studying the feasibility of establishing a locally based, effective and comprehensive system in which health, medical and welfare services will be incorporated for the benefit of the elderly and every individual. Now that the decentralization process of public services has progressed and people's needs for health and medical services have been diversified, the system needs to offer attentive care to community people properly. Certainly, the low fertility and aging population will continue. Therefore, the existing social security systems must be reviewed urgently. Now Japan is moving to integrate medical, health and welfare services into one system. So far, we have had a quick review of the health and medical services and systems of Japan after it became a modern state. Each period had its health and social problems such as infectious disease, maternal and child health, pollution, lifestyle related diseases and population aging. Our senior generations have devised a variety of measures and the government and local people join their hands in their efforts to solve problems. Throughout these five periods, there was a government's strong will to upgrade the standards of health and medical services. Further policies and measures were formulated upon baseline statistics and fact-finding survey results. Even though we, the Japanese today, are enjoying an affluent life, we were in a miserable plight until only a short time ago. Our older generations have made devoted efforts to improve the health and medical services. Today we are faced with new health problems such as HIV, AIDS and SARS. Other challenging problems may emerge in the future. Even so, we will be able to find clues for solutions by reviewing the systems, mechanisms, actions and experiences that we have accumulated. Japan, on which about 130 million people live. Japan, in which people can obtain almost everything they wish. Supported by its favorable economic and educational backgrounds, people enjoy high health standards as presented by the longest average life expectancy and one of the lowest infant mortalities in the world. The present status of Japan is nothing but the result of having overcome a number of unexpected challenges through concerted efforts of people and the government.